Hello and welcome to DW Kit. In this tutorial series, we'll learn how to create our own business process management systems using this platform. We can create data models in visual forms for our workflows and automate the most elaborate business processes from start to finish, all within one environment. In this video, we'll do an overview of the admin panel. Let's log in to the DW Kit test account. If you've deployed DWKit on your server, the system will be accessible at a custom URL that you can see in the address bar here. The default login pair is admin as a username and the digit 1 as a password. You can change the username and password later. As soon as you log in, you can see the interface of the business process application you created. In this example, we're using a vacation request test process. Switch to the admin panel on the upper top corner where you can see your username. The first thing you see is the dashboard, which includes license information, plus stats on the items currently in use, and their limits according to your plan. Here you can download the OpenAPI description, which will allow you to integrate DWKit with your own system based on PHP, C Sharp, Java, or any other programming language. The key for API authentication from within your system will go here. The next menu section is Data. Here in Data Model Management, you can create data objects that will be used by the system you're building. For example, in the current system setup, you can see a document object. A document can have multiple attributes, an ID, name, number, state, and so on. These values can be stored as a string, integer, decimal, boolean, and other data types. You can sync your existing database with a data model by clicking here. Code actions allow you to declare user-defined functions in C Sharp. This is a server-side code, and it's frequently used for filters and triggers. We'll describe this topic more in the following videos. Now let's move on to forms. In this part of DWKit, you can assign various types of forms. Later on, end users will interact with these forms throughout the flow of the business process. Let's open the first form here. Drag the elements from the panel on the right to the drop zones in the middle. Each form field can be mapped to the data model that you've created. Let's open an object from this list. Just like creating forms, you can drag the items from the right column to the left one. This will bind the form fields to the attributes in your data model. Under Action Handlers, you can add client-side JavaScript functions to determine how a form should react to user actions. You can edit JavaScript code right in this window. Localization lets you translate all the forms to another language and set a region-specific date and time format. Now let's move on to creating the workflow logic. When you go to Manage Schemes, you can create, edit, or delete schemes. Let's double click on an existing scheme here. That opens up the Visual Designer. Check out the Visual Designer tutorial series to learn more. You can find a link in the description. In Manage Instances, you can see the currently running processes and manage them individually. If an employee submits a vacation request, you can check the state of the workflow. Also, you can change the state and instance status using the buttons at the top. The Business Flow functionality simplifies the connection between forms and workflows. You can filter out forms depending on the workflow state and the user role, so an end user will see only the form needed on the current step of the business process. Under the Security menu item, you can manage users, combine them into groups, and assign their roles and permissions. Users are unique employees with a first and last name, email, and password. Each user may belong to a group, for example, a branch or an office. More importantly, users may have roles that are similar to their position at work. You can specify as many roles as you like, for example, admin, manager, lawyer, accountant, or whoever participates in your business processes. 
Each user may have multiple roles. User permissions specify what tasks users can perform and what features users can access. You will be able to set permissions for each role. The final set of user permissions is the combination of all permissions for the groups and roles they are associated with. And that covers everything. Now you know what the admin panel in DWKit looks like. Let's recap what you can do with DWKit. Create a workflow with the visual designer. Build a data model. Create objects and set their attributes. Create users, roles, and groups, and assign permissions. Create forms as part of a front end that'll be accessed by users. Map forms with data and with the workflow so it can all work as a single system. Translate the entire workflow and all the forms into a different language. Integrate DWKit into your system via an API. And that wraps up the basics of the admin panel. In our next tutorial, you'll learn how to create a data model for your business processes and how to import a database into your DW kit and sync database changes with your data model. Thanks for watching. Give this video a like and subscribe to the OptimaJet channel to stay up to date with our latest tutorials.